life processes and living things. When thinking about life processes and living things, we first have to identify which things are alive and which things have never been alive, like rocks. There are some standard tests that scientists use to check if something is alive. We need these tests as with some plants or animals it isn't easy to check as it first might seem to be. These che tests check to see if the thing being considered can move, feed, grow, sense their environment and reproduce. Even checking these may be difficult since some animals, like corals for example, move very slowly and plants don't even move in the same way that animals do. Animals and plants react to things in their environment. They react positively towards good things around them. For example, a dog will move towards its bowl when it's filled with food, and a plant will point its leaves towards the direction of the sun or grow roots in the direction of water. Similarly, a dog will move away from something that is painful to it. Animals need to eat and drink to stay alive, but what they eat varies for each animal. Sometimes this can be viewed as a food pyramid. Food pyramids can contain a number of plants and animals, but the simplest of these has one plant, one herbivore, which is an animal which eats plants, and one carnivore, which is an animal which eats other animals. A simple food pyramid has grass at the bottom, rabbits next, which eat the grass, and foxes at the top, which eat the rabbits. In order for the plants to grow, they need sunlight, water, and some trace elements like magnesium, for example. Plants convert the sunlight and water into energy through a process called photosynthesis. This gives the materials for the plant to grow and reproduce. This takes place in the leaves of the plant. The larger the leaf, the more sunlight each one can capture, and the higher up it is, the less likely it is to be overshadowed by other plants. There is a vast variety of plants and animals in the world because they have adapted to different conditions around them. However, nearly all of these plants and animals are connected to each other, as in the example of the food pyramid. If there was no grass, there would be no rabbits, since they would have nothing to eat. There would also be no foxes, since there would be no rabbits. It's a little bit more complicated, this, but this example shows you that foxes do depend upon grass to survive, even though they don't eat grass themselves. So that's just an introduction to life processes and living things.